All right, it's time now for culture, a catch up on culture on France 24 with Cathy Clifford. Happy Valentine's Day, Cathy. Thank you. you too. <laughs> uh, it is a cultural, I suppose, uh, a moment uh, in, in the year. We're living in a world where fewer people are celebrating it, I suppose, in the traditional sense, at least a few fewer people getting married in any case, more people living alone. Um, what kind of love stories do people want to hear about in 2019? Well, the romance genre novel, believe it or not, is actually one of the industry's book industry's biggest sellers. It's up there with crime novels. Um, and statistically, these novels are more likely to be read by older women. So that mm -hmm. begs the question, what about younger gener generations? What kind of love stories do they want to read about? Um, so many millennials, like myself, grew up on a, on a saturated diet of rom-coms mm -hmm. uh, and there's been a lot said about how this can lead to uh, unrealistic expectations when it comes to love. Mm -hmm. uh, so nowadays the, the, that conventional romantic story arc isn't so in demand. Uh, people want to read about realistic situations, they want strong female characters, they want to see different kinds of There needs to be suffering, right? It has to be, yeah. What's there the has to be a dark a bit side. Of suffering. <laughs> it's not real otherwise. <laughs> exactly. Uh, meanwhile, the playing field itself has shifted. Uh, online dating has come to dominate the, the playing field. 41% uh, of singles uh, around the world are thought to be active on, on these online uh, It's totally revolutionised things, hasn't it? Especially the geolocalised yeah. apps yeah. where proximity kind of is, is kind of the chief factor, which it shouldn't be really, yeah, in terms of looking yeah. for a partner. Definitely. Uh, so really, the appetite for love stories in, in literature is now shifting in, in that to reflect that diversity. The appetite. The appetite. There you go. <laughs> so well, which writers are taking uh, love stories in a new direction then? Is there, are, there, uh, are, there, are there some writers in particular who are of note? Um, absolutely, she's a big deal in Ireland, uh, Irish writer, and the UK at the moment. For those of you who haven't heard of her, Sally Rooney mm -hmm. um, has been dubbed the Salinger for the Snapchat generation, and she writes particularly well about uh, love in a modern context. Um, Conversations with Friends was her first novel, and that uh, tells the story of a young uh, bisexual student who gets caught up in a love quadrangle, and uh, that's told uh, across different platforms, uh, social media, uh, email, uh, instant messaging. A bisexual in a love quadrangle, that's very <laughs> millennial, right? Very, <laughs> it's very millennial. <laughs> And uh, Normal People is her second novel, and it's one of the best love stories I've read in ages. Okay. Um, it's the tale of two students in Dublin um, from different social classes, and mm -hmm. they're on and off relationships, and they've, they're, the characters are so well portrayed, they really stick in your head. Connell and Marianne, uh, took me a while to leave them behind. Uh, the book was uh, nominated for the Man Booker Award and it won the Costa Novel of the Year Award, making Sally Rooney the youngest uh, author to win that, just 27 years old. Um, I'm also a massive fan of uh, poet uh, Hera Lindsay Bird. Uh, mm -hmm. She writes very unique love poetry, um, which manages to be to be sentimental, sexually explicit, um, also witty, ironic, um, all of these things at the same time. <laughs> um, big fan. And uh, one of the best books I read uh, last year was a, was a strange love story by Melissa Broder. It's the tale, uh, the Pisces it's called. It's mm. the tale um, of a woman trying to get over her ex. She's writing her thesis on the Greek, ancient Greek poet uh, Sappho. Mm. And she uh, she's uh, in the love addiction therapy and at the same time yo-yoing back and forth between uh, Tinder binges and having these disastrous dates. Uh, so it's really a, a parody on modern dating and therapy culture. But at the same time, it de delves into magical realism because she falls in love with a merman and uh, and that uh, there's just some fantastic uh, imaginative love scenes about what it would be like to be with a merman. So. Fantastic. Well, I, I, I think it's great that, you know, that modern, the modern, I suppose, love stories are integrating uh, tools like Tinder or whatnot, which are, have just become so much a part of the a dating scene for better or for worse yeah, in the past uh, five to ten years. Now, uh, what about uh, new releases? Film releases? So we have uh, Lena Wolf's The Polyglot Lovers, which has done very well in Sweden. Uh, it was released in Sweden in 2016 and that won the country's uh, top literary prize. Um, there's a lot going on in this novel. Uh, the timeline is in reverse. It's told from uh, several narrative perspectives. Uh, we begin with a woman in a small village in Sweden who fights in a local fight club and uh, she decides to try online dating. Um, that brings her into the life of this really horrible 
odious uh, literary tri- critic in Stockholm. See, this is the thing with online dating, right? You can, you, you, you know, it's not kind of organic uh, introductions. It's, it's, you can have all, all sorts of surprising encounters, right? So that's one of these surprising encounters by the sounds of it. Absolutely. And it, there's a lot of humour in the way the book talks about, about online dating and the, the way the woman sort of disconnects herself from the flattery uh, uh, of, the, of the compliments of the photo she put up and uh, sends a, a more realistic photo out. Um, it's also very uh, darkly funny uh, in that the characters are very unpredictable. Uh, they really surprise you. They're not, they're not very likeable. Um, mm. uh, it's not one to warm the cockles of your heart, but right. it is a very dry and clever look at the, okay. the quest for love, as it were. I see. The polyglot lovers, uh, <laughs> on, on, what would you say, unlikable uh, <laughs> protagonists. Uh, well, thanks for that look at today's... Uh, Valentine's Day culture uh, themed show. Thanks very much for that, Cathy Clifford. Now, let's catch up on the day's sports news next, starting uh, with Champions.